Hello and welcome to day three, aka day four, because we started on day zero of this development vlog for creating a modern OpenGL game engine. I don't know if you can tell, it's very early here, it's 4.54 a.m. Started a lot earlier because I did one last night, less than 12 hours ago, about five hours ago or so, and no, about six, seven hours ago, and I was tired so I, I literally only did about 30 minutes so I, I always wake up early anyway and I went to bed quite, quite early last night I usually go to bed about 12 I wake up at half four I'm usually tired like proper tired by the end of it and I, I don't know why I thought it'd be best to do it at the end of the day instead of the start of the day because during the day it's, it is a lot harder for me because of other commitments but I'm gonna try and do it as one of the first things when I wake up so Let's get back to it. So I'm gonna try and do about an hour or so. So it was having, I was having an issue with, cause I was, what was I doing? I was doing the, the these, these values here. Cause I've got a framework interface and within here, got set window size, get window size. And the thing I couldn't figure out was in let's say the SDL file when I do this window which is referring to this right here why was it trying to get or why was it why was this object able to access stuff like my sonar game engine stuff so this doesn't compile which I wouldn't expect it to but why were the method there oh, yeah okay yeah either way that's I guess never him or there but the methods were there for some reason that what I was trying to find was some SDL methods for getting the window size I want to actually check what the window size was in terms of SDL because in GLFW I've already set the size and actually I set the size in here using this method and that is called from the core engine method like so but what I was wondering was because in GIFW what you have to do is do the gear in GIFW get frame buffer size which actually gets the sort of actual effective window size because if you're on a high pixel or I mean high density screen like like an iMac for example or what I do with my iMac which because it's 2560 by 1440 iMac it's done on retina iMac I make it retina by cramming that many pixels in 1280 by 720 hence why everything looks 1280 by 720 in terms of like the scaling of it but the quality looks 1440p and otherwise you just occupy the core of the screen that's the same with I'm pretty sure any sort of high density screen that you need to do this with SFML and SDL on the other hand actually SFML I think you might have to as well but I think you might not just do it because I'll show one second I'll show you what I mean because on you yeah, haven't implemented certain methods I've just prevent from compiling but yeah on SFML remember the window's always tiny roughly if I can remember about a quarter of the size so I think I might actually have to quadruple this resolution but the problem with quadrupling is what about on the screen sizes that aren't I mean what about on screens that aren't high p density I'm actually gonna google that that's something that's come to mind SFML Retina. My alarm, which I can't obviously don't need anymore. One second. Do, 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 do. Support retina displays and other high DPI displays. Yeah, this would be good to know. So this would be good to fix. Is there anything? Just have a quick scan. 
you obviously you're setting the resolution but are you doing anything with it different I remember when if you were to set up a SML project on Mac it would look something like so using the default sort of creator templates in Xcode never liked that image especially in SFML because SFML I've always seen as sort of 2D sort of mini game engine and yeah games obviously never look like that and uh, okay I forgot also to add in the apps info .p list so if, does it have an info .p list by default choose info .p. no it doesn't so do I need to create it this is something well I've sort of noticed it but it just is this something that I almost ignored? I've noticed that SML seems to handle scale resolutions differently than GFW. When GFW creates a 800 by 600 window, it looks appropriately sized when uses, using a scale resolution in OSX. Looks like 1440 by 900 of those years of which scale can SML creates an 800 by 600 window, it looks tiny. It looks like SML is basing the size of the window on the actual monitor resolution rather than scale resolution yeah obviously that's exactly what we want yes you just need to add NS high resolution cavity application playlist for you this from our template for Xcode is done for you so actually I believe I already have I've got the templates installed their old templates but the the info of playlist no P list. P list code should be here so if I you know go back let's do command line interface try that one yeah all of this should be a okay I'm just gonna put a random name save it to my desktop Okay, got a video mode. No, this doesn't have it. I'm going to try again with the application instead of the console one. And if that doesn't have it, have it. I'll manually create the .p list myself. No, not playground. I want a project, new project. and supporting files high resolution capable resolution capable yes yeah, so if I go to this there isn't a supporting files folder I'll just do, do it uh, can I it's the best way of creating one so new file list on manually created I guess make sure I get like a similar structure going nope it's just there so I'm just gonna actually gonna copy this paste this into here and I'm just gonna call this I'm gonna call it input up here list I'm going to choosing for the playlist I need to add it but I'm going to again create a use a very similar structure so sort of within the actual product then here I'm going to put supporting files it's new group supporting files I'm going to ah, but will that mess up? G O F W O S D L. We'll find out. Let's have a look. Choose it. Info the P list. Is this one being selected? 
Yep, it got selected right there. So, uh, did it? Identity, that is fine. I guess that was the P list, I mean, the name of it anyway. So, high resolution capable, everything else just looks default. A uh, build file, I believe that's from before. Yeah, that's the sort of size it's meant to look. And if we run in SFML now, so we go to definitions, comment this out. Yeah, th this is what it's looking like though. But if you have a look, that's roughly if you remove that bar, it's about a quarter of the size, because I believe I've set it to 800 by 640 using magic numbers in the CVP file. 800 by 600. So, the high resolution cable board didn't do anything from what I can tell. Unless I need to specifically do something in here. There's another thing I was thinking, do I need to do some other setting see there's no info tab my target that's my target where is this info tab and also you see only four applications are not terminal is it being copied no so Mm. Let's have a look what else is saying. Plain execute for not an app bundle. Right now, it's for my fourth now final situation. High DPA user on my program. I have to explicitly go to the preferences and specify that they want the window to be scaled two times and get the normal size window. There's no way to detect high DPI. SDLT doesn't have this problem, instead, it just works. Windows have the same virtual size on high DPI and non high DPI displays with no need to have that anywhere when neither STL nor GF Toby every library has their quirk yeah, that's fine that's fair enough I'm not here to argue about the quirks I'm here to find a solution yeah clearly it doesn't distinguish between them hence why I'm here Full support for high DPI displays, small section describing DPI handling in GFW. Get window aspect ratio. Yeah, that is important. The, another thing I also discussed yesterday was whether or not once I've got this size to set this size. To, to, to update the window sizes in this, it is important. So I need to do this set window window size to screen width and screen height. So that I'm going to switch back to. GFW Hmm One error Capital S Yeah, that's that is fine now, so if I were to get the value be the sort of the scaled value still want to figure out this SFMR issue before I start proceeding with the other methods if I can do something similar where I can 
add the function scale factor that will retrieve the current scaling factor of the window. So I change the default view generation so it's based on screen coordinates that rather than pixels. The, the, the scaling field should be added to the SF size of M for cases like when a window is moved between its places is with different scaling factors. Alternatively, we could do similar to GFW create a new event of that deals exclusively with scaling events. Get size, get size. Forget that stuff. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna look at sort of get so exactly what it get scale. Get scale factor. So if I go to definitions Also, I don't think I'm using that number system anymore either. No. And also, what I want to do is just get rid of these lines. So there's only one hash defined. I'm going to put a comment here. SGE underscore SDL. SGE underscore SFML. I will elaborate on these comments later on. Famous last words. Save that. Confirm it's all still working. Yes, fine. Looks like we got to the SFML CPP. Window dot get scale. Does not get scale factor. No goddamn the scale factor or from what I can see. Add the function. Hmm. I'll try dot get size. Okay, this is what I wanted in terms of my vector to do X and Y, but yeah. In, they've implemented their own vector for that which I'd rather stay away from implementing my own sort of data types it's just I don't see the point of implementing my own I'll, I'll have a look if there's a vector class where I can actually I could for the most part nah. uh, again I don't want to be handling vector classes I'd rather stay away from that stuff, honestly. My friend of mine at uni, in Java, tried to implement his own was it, was it vector, or I think it was a vector class. He didn't, some re reason, realize that Java had it built in. And then he called me into his room and he was testing his application, and there were so many problems going on. I was just fixing them one by one, and I was just like, I went into the vector class, I was like, what's this? He was like, I created myself because it's not available. And I was like, yeah, it is. And he said, that ain't the problem. Why would that be the problem? Because the issue wasn't suggesting that like, that was the problem. I was like, I've tried everything else. Let's just try using the default vector class bit within Java. Tried it and it worked. <laughs> Let's go back to this. I just literally wanted to CC this out. So I'm going to do hash. Include IO stream STD C out I'm not I don't know why I'm doing this because it's not like that this would be any different from eight hundred by six hundred but I'm sort of hoping Terminal Yeah, 
yeah, it's not it's the resolution that we expected it to be. SF render window. See what exact method we got we got. Got position now, we got settings, I guess system handle. Could that could potentially be something Hmm. Set size new set vertical sync enable no. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put get system handle, go to the definition, see what sort of description we've got, what is it anyway? Yeah, they've done something similar as well where they got a bunch of hash defined but they're all named the same. Mac. I don't want to get to the actual implementation of this. They use the little shortcut on the keyboard yeah, to get to the implementation of it. So there, that'll be it. No. We get some sort of window handle. Current size of the window. Nope. usage example I'm gonna go back to the my web browser I'm putting SFML get scale window get scale may potentially have to write uh, an Objective-C method to detect what sort of scaling we've got and then change it accordingly but then that'll be only for Windows, I mean Mac then I'll have to do the same for Windows, same for Linux I want to stay away from that shit as much as possible the size of the rendering region of the window OS specific handle. I'm going to try that. So, window get system handle and if this can be logged out I doubt it. Maybe so. System handle. On resize, no. Because SFML freeze and looking like it's going to be coming out anytime soon at all. See what they're doing here. Let's see what happens if we're typing this from our free.
Could be something that could be left to a later date. It's not the end of the world. We do have the other frameworks in there as long as we just update the SFML core framework classes will be all good to go again when the new version comes out. Our installation video is possible. Free to put in bed in the right YouTube video and so explain how to install it from now. We've got videos. I don't think we'll do that. If you read any video tutorials, you can find some more or less good series on YouTube. But what videos add, what would videos add compared to the official tutorial, especially for installation and setup? I, I find videos do help a lot, but fair enough. I just say screenshot. Yeah, obviously Laurent is getting a little offended that so this is his baby because his name is Laurent Gamilla. Name used to be down here. Actually, I'm pretty sure on the official homepage it still is Laurent Gamilla. Yeah, that's the license I was looking for. Zlib PNG. This is the one I believe you can basically do whatever you want. Free for any use, commercial, personal, proprietary, or open source. You can use SFML on your project without any restriction. You can even admit to mention that you use SFML, although it will be appreciated. And this is the Zlib PNG license. We go to GitHub. Honestly, I've never added a license after I've created the project, so question is, how do I add it? After oh, sort of drop down. I was just saying it. License anywhere. GitHub add license. Live in my repository. Name license of text in the root. Here's example of the license.md. I'm gonna get zlib plus slash png license. I'm not going to put any subject, any sort of caveats with it at all. They've got some sort of high resolution demo here, I'll check that out and if not I'll just get back to the method stuff that I was doing. So I was about to create the license, create a new file. I know a lot of this, uh, some people have said why don't you do it almost in your own time and then focus the entire video on coding and do the research in your own time I just want to document as much as possible show people the process that you would go through when let's say doing a project and having it on github and let's just say it's open source the certain stuff that's not just coding based you would, uh, I did that but even though I am typing here but this is what's like coding sort of thing but even though it's not coding based it's still part of your project so copyright hand holders year 2016 permission is granted to anyone to use the software for any purpose including commercial applications to alter and distribute it freely no. yep we're not how responsible for now initial commit it's all suffice and we can add other license update the license after if anyone has any suggestions feel free to let me know I was going to check out what this person's done it says he handled it let's 
try game.cpp mm -hmm. okay has he handled it? Don't think why it will be anywhere in the header. Include resource path. Is this just to show it? And um, we're not using an app bundle anyway, we're using terminal. Go for an event and return it. Okay, that's fine, I'm just going to leave it for now. Because I think I'm just wasting way too much time on here. I think this is probably getting boring for you guys. So, I was looking into. Let's get back to the. SDL stuff. Definitions. And in SDL CPP, should just be able to use this get window size zero because that's how it's handled at the moment but what I want to do is dot x or dot width depending on what sort of thing we're doing zero Okay, yeah, that's still working as expected. Another thing that I need to do is also have default values for these because if in your could just in here set some default values and then just hash have a hash defined file. Honestly, I'm probably going to do that. Before I do that, let me just I'm, st I'm still really annoyed about this. I want dot x and dot width vector. C plus plus vector with custom get method So, obviously this is a live, so if anyone watching this video and you have any suggestions on how to do this, just to iterate, what I want to do is have the vector name, so let's just say if it's called variable, very, instead of saying variable square bracket zero square bracket, for let's say the x or the width value, I want to be able to do variable dot x or variable dot width, if it's some sort of width and height object data storage that would make it a lot nicer I don't know, the more I start using this code the more annoying it's going to be to change it later on 
and if they if you know of a class that already does it or like a class that I can just get off of GitHub, something where I basically don't have to recreate it myself because again I just want to stay away from that stuff. Before I have to, that's I guess it's something I'll have to do. I'm go I'm actually gonna go to does SDL have a vector class or not? It's even SDL doesn't have a vector class. So if I were to do window dot actually I'm gonna go to no. that's fine I guess. Need to do the same as a formal so Let's change this back and go to the file where are you? Got this, let's copy that, put this in the SFML file as well where we got six hundred and eight hundred should be working a okay now we should still be working a okay apart from the scaling and if anyone's got a solution of how to do the scaling without you using an app bundle feel free to let us know I'm going to delete this because I don't think we're using we don't need to be using that confirm it's still working which is it appears to be working so we need to start setting up these methods the way I'm going to do it is have them outside of this GOFW I'm going to have it in the core framework so what I'm going to do is framework interface yeah, even this is an override in it I guess no, it is because it's passing it down apart from that. Actually, what would happen if I were to remove this? Would it still work? Nope. So, yeah, I was hoping that it would still work, but it didn't. So, in the framework interface dot dpp d dot inheriting from yeah, the one inherited from the framework interface and not the game engine, which I guess we don't want them in to inherit from here. Or do we? They could potentially inherit from this. So, okay, so let's have a look what we got. We got in it. Poll events, swap buffers, clean up, and set window size. If I were to get rid of this, get rid of it in here. No, nope, don't want that. Get rid of it in here. Go to SFML, I believe that's the one that's activated. Change this to duplicate this. Do or remove it if I don't need it. The, the framework interface header. Core. Unknown framework object. I'm 
Again, it's going to be the unknown framework object, isn't it? Why is that messing about? Now, let me steer away from doing it like this then. Yep, that's still messing up because I deleted the methods from here. Let's just undo this. So we're back again. So, but on the bright side, I'm not recreating the methods in here. So I'm only initially creating them in here, and then creating the pass down in here. So it's not too bad. So it's, it's only one extra, so a mini layer. And I was wanting to do the default value so I'm going to do that in framework interface no not framework interface can't do it in here because there's no constructor unless I have an init method in here which is always called from the core framework method and I'll do framework dot object dot in I'm gonna do framework object dot constructor constructor I might as well honestly just construct on the quality construct so in framework interface, I'm going to do void construct now void framework interface construct in here I'm gonna put all my hash defines in the CPP file, I guess. Don't need the anywhere else. Hash define SGE underscore underscore framework interface underscore screen underscore width. This all hopefully prevented from ever conflicting with anything. I'm gonna put a value, default value of six. 40 480 but now in here I will just do this set window size to SGE SGE where's the height of value value I haven't changed the name of it so let's just update this to hide save that what errors do we get if any I guess so I'm going to switch back to SDL I prefer the big window and if I run it we should get a, a window that's square I think it's 800 by 800 in the sense setting the core engine file but if I don't set it we should get on a 600 by 640 by 480 640 by 480 which is fantastic so we've always got a default set of values so it's, it's all you, it, it always works okay core engine because realistically need to take this sort of methods out as well need a better way of doing this it, eventually we'll probably have once I set up all the methods I'll probably look into creating a static settings class that can be used from 
anywhere in the application and that sort of stuff will be setting outside of the core engine file which I guess the framework interface will no longer have these methods question is should I do that now or time I'll probably tackle that in the next video so what other methods do we have if we I wanted to cover the def bits, stencil bits, the Cocos 2D version potentially the sort of profile but probably stay away from that that's very specific specific of these are the same as numbers and even if they are they might not be the same GFW SDR and SFML requires more sort of checking between the frameworks need one for the name of the window one second if I turn this off the light was flashing at me it still is it's turned off now need to set the name need to send, set the four va values but I'm just thinking if I'm potentially going to be looking at window sizes I mean you using the settings static class okay let me just think about how it's gonna work and then I'll probably end it in this video create a static settings class I don't that that wouldn't be in the frameworks would that be in core yeah I could potentially warrant point that core and I can move it around after so let's just say if it's in the core folder settings for example and yeah it's like I said, it's static, or how would we be accessing it? Because at the moment, this is what we've got. After we did this code, the I believe this was the initial video, we haven't touched the main at all. The other thing I'm trying to sort of conceptualize is where we would be adding OpenGL code. Because at the moment, the OpenGL draw code will be here, but I any file that is sort of designated as core or is a core file because the user shouldn't have to go back into it the user shouldn't realistically have to touch this shouldn't have to touch necessarily this but saying that <coughs> <coughs> when I say user I mean developer I need to stop using that word user because Whenever I use it, I would think of end user. Whenever I hear it, I think of end user. I need to say developer because the user should never be touching the code. So the developer. But the other thing is, they might potentially be using GL clear, changing it because they might be adding, let's say, the depth buffer bit as well. They might be clearing the depth buffer as well, not just the color buffer, which they will be. They're doing 3D. GL clear color. More than warranted for them to sort that out. So the question is, yeah, actually we could handle that in settings as well. We could handle that in settings. We could have data that's been stored for the color itself in some sort of. This is, let's say, some sort of vector or an array of four float. Item and for the geo clear because what is this? Is this basically a number? Mm. Yeah, I guess we could. It's just a hexadecimal value. We could store this in our settings class, so we could have some sort, let's say, vector of buffer bits that need to be cleared obviously it's I'm not doing that much checking it's, it is on the assumption that you put a buffer that is exists in there but the other thing is with the geo depth buffer for example you don't just do geo clear and put the geo depth buffer bit in there you have to do geo enable and you need to enable geo depth test where would you put that? Hmm. Questions, questions, questions. Realistically, we need a separate sort of method. Again, probably not in the core engine folder. 
where you would probably handle that yeah I need to think of the structure a bit more so I'm gonna go to this page go to notes that's what I'm working on at the moment I'm gonna create a new file I was gonna call it structure.md project structure So the first structure we've got at the moment is root and then we've got core because this root refers to this right here because all of these they are really part of our coding section because any resources are all whack in there as well so we would have core we have res, which is the resources within here. We have images, shaders, audio, anything else that is required. Pretty self explanatory stuff that sort of structure is. And then in here, we've also got frameworks. Do we put in the names of these in here so oh, we've got what should designate as a symbol for a file name percent framework interface dot h dot cpp I've used HPP so they'll keep it consistent I've uh, let me copy and paste this version. What time is it? Yeah, I'll be ending the video soon. I need SGE, SG underscore GRFW. CPP. And it is the same for SDL. SFML and core framework again if you have any suggestions regarding structure or anything feel free to let me know via YouTube someoneonline.co.uk which is a free education platform Reddit private message however we welcome the feedback core engine Actually, I was just thinking, the user will probably have their own settings file. Because if, you know, let's say if you're creating Crash Bandicoot, you're probably going to ignore ignore any settings like window size, stuff that's unique to the game. You might have settings for, what settings would you have for that? You might, let's try to think now. You, you could have sort of menu settings or sort of menu like menu items they've got so they can easily change the name of the menu items if they want to you might want to have stuff for sort of like because there's codes in there whether you can unlock certain level or unlock certain aspects of the game you might have that have some sort of password system but you, it's, it's more than common to have multiple settings for at least one for the actual game itself so based on that I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put core settings .hpp. and realistically this should only be used within the core folder but if you needed to access it outside of the core folder you could get to it because it's static and you'll be able to access it. You can access it because outside of the core folder is the main dot cpp as well so the definitions folder realistically definitions okay 
I need to designate, I need to specify some sort of way to say this needs to be created, I'll just do this. Needs to be created. Needs to be created. This doesn't need to be created, but what it needs to be, it needs to be moved. Needs to be moved into the core settings file. So again, the SDL, GFW, SML is more of a core aspect of the project and once you've like, changed it, you wouldn't really be changing it too many times. And, but if you did want it, you could just go to the core settings. That would just be a hash defined, but that's, a, I would put it in there. So, to, 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 to install the update tonight, that's fine. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the progress today. We made a bit of progress with, well, we figured that SFML has that issue. Haven't fixed that, but we got the window methods implemented in SFML, SDL, we already had in GFW, but we're going to actually abstract this out because I guess this will get deleted. I'm going to put it into a settings file. But, well, that's what this project is going to entail a lot of. And projects in general, you do something and then you figure out a better way to do or a way that you think is better, then you change it, then you go back to it, etc. Et There's going to be a lot of back and forth. There's going to be a lot of changing, as there always is with any sort of project beyond some sort of really really basic coursework tutorial that you're doing for something like a university so I'll confirm it's still running a okay I didn't commit yesterday's code I was tired so I'm definitely going to commit today's one so I need to open up github that's another thing I need to do on certain of the windows, I mean certain windows, if I try and do command Q, it will try and click this, it doesn't quit because it's not implemented. Whereas on GFW, where's the format? Was it implemented? Yeah, it's implemented. So I'll, I'll fix that in the next one. So I'm actually going to make a note of that on. So let's create the new, commit the new file, go to notes. This is in progress. And the next thing or oh, what was that other thing it was fix. Window not closing. That should be enough. Probably once this sort of becomes, w once this project starts advancing, because it, it, it's just the initial setup phase at the moment, we'll probably have to set up some sort of Trello board or some sort of project management board so we can see the flow of the application where we've got bugs to do in progress, blocked completed that sort of stuff because at the moment this is fine but eventually we're going to need something a bit more concrete than this so we go we're in the game engine let's sync it now let's go to the folder copy this into here Confirm this is the right one. What changes do I do today? Okay, the changes I know I did today are in SFML, get window size, fine. Now let's commit this bad boy. Day three, this. So yeah, we were day zero, one, two, day three, commit. AKA. Day, day two, day four, commit to master, sync. Boom, done. Just confirm it's on GitHub 
and then I'll be ending this video. Yep. It's now committed, so if I go to this recording software, thank you for watching. Oh, it's been an hour. See, it has now <laughs> been an hour. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on, on the stuff that I discussed or any other suggestions, feel free to post them in the comments, post them on our education platform, sonline.co.uk or post them on Reddit, however you want, because Reddit's a nice place to get bait starting. So yeah, it'd be nice to post them on there. Hope you enjoy your day, whether it's night, whether it's morning, and have a good one.